The word homeless usually brings up an image of someone sleeping rough on the streets, but it can also mean a person moving between places in search of a safe night's sleep. The Straits Times' senior correspondent Zaihan Mohamed Yusuf has been looking into the issue of people sleeping rough in Singapore. At one MRT station in particular last month, he observed people sleeping nearby and some of them were foreign workers waiting for their late shift to start. And last Friday, Zaihan returned to the area. It's almost midnight and it's quite quiet here at Woodlands MRT station. Last Christmas, we saw more than 20 people sleeping around the vicinity of the station. Among them were foreign workers. We are here today to have a look at the situation. Previously, the workers were sleeping, you know, close to the machineries. Uh, they were on cardboards and plastic sheet lining. Uh, some had their safety boots and hard hats beside them. And if you approach here, it will be difficult to maneuver because they were all over the place on the floor, maybe five just around the surrounding area. Today is much better, of course. By 1 a.m., these foreign workers are up and ready for work at the train station. But around me are spots often favoured by Malaysian and Singaporean rough sleepers. Last Christmas, we found eight of them. I wonder if they're still here tonight. Because we unnoticed we slept here over a few days. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I have a house. I'm staying near mine. And then why do you sit here at night? No, because sometimes I, because I'm staying alone. Uh -huh. Sometimes I just uh, go back in the mirror. No, I'm not reading because of the free, free Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi. Oh, <laughs> no, okay, I'm reading. Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks. I've just spoken to a man I've seen more than three times. He claims he is not homeless. Wait, I already been here. It's about one year. No, no money. This uh, where where do you usually sleep? Here. Yeah. Are you also homeless? Right. Are you? Is it also sleeping outside? No, no, no. He's company. Me. Oh. Tonight, I've seen some familiar faces as well as new ones here. But rough sleepers can be found in other places nearby. At a coffee shop, just not too far away from here, we saw an auntie sleeping while seated. Not too far away from the coffee shop is a park where we found three men who had made it their home. Among them is a 67-year-old Singaporean who was forced to leave his home in Johor Bahru just about the same time when Malaysia closed its borders in March 2020. Despite efforts by the authorities to have him sheltered, he is still homeless. Senior correspondent Zaihan Mohamed Yusuf joins me now. Zaihan, sleeping rough is something that no one should have to experience. What are some of the reasons that would force a person onto the streets? Well, there are a number of reasons. Uh, some of it involve, um, you know, being jobless, that's one. Second is, uh, some of them we've interviewed, they've lost their homes. Others, it could be ego because there was an argument at home and they decided to move out of the house. So there's no one reason that actually ties them all together. Everybody that we've spoken to has their own particular reasons. And uh, it only becomes worse during the pan pandemic because it's escalated. I see. Well, Zaihan, if... You know, for our viewers watching uh, the video and this interview, you know, and if they are worried about someone sleeping rough, what are some practical ways to help the individual? I think uh, one of the ways is to listen to them first, listen to their stories, their needs. Um, not all of them want to be helped because uh, I know for a fact that some of them, they've been offered help, but they still prefer to live on their own, live outdoors. And um, in this case of Woodlands MRT, these rough sleepers feel that there is a small commune there, that they are safe and that nothing can happen to them. But 
uh, after hearing their story, I think in the end you should still alert the authorities because they are the ones that can really help. And there are of course befrienders that go out uh, to seek these uh, rough sleepers and to listen to their stories. Uh, I personally feel that uh, by listening and by observing, you notice that there are actually kind people out there who donate food, uh, offer some cash. Um, there's actually a burger joint uh, in near Woodlands MRT that donates like occasionally 30 burgers. They just leave it at the spots where uh, these rough sleepers sleep and, and um, I think that's a ni very nice gesture. And what are your impressions of the people who are sleeping rough? Is there a way out for the people that you've met? I think this is a very complex uh, situation because not all of them have the same story. You know, some want to be helped, some actually prefer to have um, shelters near their workplace. Um, and, uh, it, but it begins with realizing that there is a problem here, an issue that you want to help resolve. If they understand that, uh, you know, rough sleeping may not be safe, uh, then perhaps they are conscious enough to want to seek help. So it starts with them too, and uh, of, of course, sometimes I feel that uh, as Singaporeans, in our haste to go home, in our haste to go to work, we miss out on all the small cues. That old man sitting down, uh, you know, not doing anything, he's actually a person who is a rough sleeper. You just need to pay a little bit more attention and maybe you can reach out and connect with him. And that was Senior Correspondent Zaihan Mohamed Yusuf. For more on Zaihan's reporting about what he observed at Woodlands MRT station between Christmas Day and the New Year, you can find his stories and videos at straitstimes.com.